There is so much writing advice out there that it can get overwhelming. Should you open your novel by describing the weather or never open your novel by describing the weather? Should you include a dream sequence or never write about someone dreaming? Is the market for memoirs done? No one wants to read about cancer anymore. <laughs> Today I'm going to debunk, as in bust open, the three most destructive writing myths that I see causing writers to suffer. Ready? Let's go. I tried writing for years, but felt like I was never quite good enough. I would stare at words I'd written on the screen with absolutely no idea how to make them better. I just knew they weren't working. Does this sound familiar? One day I realized a huge reason why I was struggling was that I'd been following the rules that everyone else had told me to follow in my writing process instead of just trying to figure out for myself what worked for me. I wanna save you those years of fighting yourself by busting a few destructive myths. The first myth is that a good writer has to write every day. The truth is that a good writer writes when they can. For years, I believed the saying that if you don't write every day, you're not a writer. I thought that taking a day off meant that I would somehow lose whatever traction I had managed to gain when it comes to learning how to write well. I, I distinctly remember the panicked feeling I would get when for every reason I just didn't have time to write on a given day. These thoughts are along the same lines as the kind of diet thinking that leads you to self-loathing and can drive you to work against yourself. You know, like you cave and you eat a chocolate chip cookie and that means, oh, I failed, so I might as well give up. Gradually, I noticed that the disaster I feared never came. I could skip a day or two here and there, could even skip a week or two. And when I came back to writing, I could still write. I could pick up where I left off. The characters had not abandoned me and neither had my skills. There's no magic number of days per week you must write to be a writer. Cheryl Strayed, author of Wild and Tiny Beautiful Things, says that she binge writes. You know, she goes months at a time without writing a word and then she'll write obsessively for a while and then you know, rinse and repeat. I fall somewhere in between this and writing every day. I write most, not all days, but I take off long stretches in between projects to work on other things. Sometimes writing, sometimes not. You do what works for you. Yes, you'll be a better writer if you write 365 days a year than if you write one day a year, just because of more practice. But you'll also be a better writer if you write 40 days of the year instead of just one day of the year. I think it's true that the more you write, the better you get. You know, don't put off writing thinking you can improve just by reading about writing. That's like trying to learn to swim any other way than jumping in the water and flailing. We have to flail. The flailing will be how you get better. But you just don't have to flail every day. <laughs> flail a lot. <laughs> flail whenever it works in your schedule. Myth number two I want to debunk is that all first drafts are terrible. The truth is that all first drafts need revising. I've never actually liked the assurance that all first drafts are crap. I, I hate it, actually. It makes me feel bad. Sure, the initial execution of your draft will be imperfect. The first draft is messy. That's not a bad thing. You know, that's beautiful. If in your first draft you raise more questions than you answer and you plant seeds that are unresolved, that's really powerful. You've laid the groundwork to bring in a lot of depth in your revision. I get the intention behind the phrase, the crappy first draft. It reassures you when you find yourself staring at a blank page. But for me, the notion of it has never made me feel reassured. It, it's made me feel like, feel like I'm gonna knock myself out working on a draft and I have been promised that it's gonna be terrible no matter how hard I work. And that just always felt to me kind of discouraging. I prefer this way of thinking about it. Yes, you'll have to revise. It's not that all first drafts are bad, but just that, you know, no first draft is done. Everyone has to revise. The first phase is creating something out of nothing. And the second phase is shaping that thing up so that its message shines brighter. One of my writers told me once, the first draft is just you telling yourself the story. And I loved that. So in case it's also helpful to you, to have a different understanding of the first draft, here's one. Your first draft is going to be decidedly not crap. 
It's just one version of the story you're telling, the version that you're telling yourself before you dress it up for other people. I have one more myth to bust for you, but before I do, I just want to invite you to apply to my program, The Book Incubator. The link is down below this video. It's only two questions, it takes under five minutes. And if you're writing a book, you'll definitely want to check it out. Now back to the video. The final myth I want to bust is that writing well has to be painful and arduous. The truth is that writing well can and should be fun and joyful most of the time. I think we've probably all encountered this idea that writing has to be painful and difficult. It's, it's a very ubiquitous idea. You can probably picture the, the bitter, wild-haired hermit chain-smoking in his messy flat with stacks of paper everywhere, his typewriter's dusty, there are empty bottles of scotch piled in the trash can, and his editor has left all these voicemails asking about the novel he was supposed to turn in 19 years ago, like the tormented genius, right? In her book, Big Magic, which is great, author Elizabeth Gilbert does an excellent job of dismantling the idea that writing has to be difficult or painful. She talks a lot about how it should actually be fun. You're partnering with creativity. You are collaborating with the creative energy of the universe. If you think about it that way, how can it really be anything but, but fun? a privilege. Of course, this doesn't mean we don't all have hard days. There will always be days when you don't feel like writing and when you doubt yourself or when you just feel like nothing is clicking for you creatively. But it can still be enjoyable, deeply enjoyable most of the time. I love writing. I love the time I get to spend writing. If I have set aside a morning to write, I wake up that day and when I'm lying in bed and I remember that I get to write, I feel truly happy. My, my body is like, yay, today's one of the days we get to do the thing that we love. So if you don't already feel this way, you can, it's possible for you to. Often you can break into joy or rediscover the joy of writing when you stop forcing yourself to do things that don't work for you or that don't work for your process. If you can only write for 15 minutes every day, or if you skip a week and then you write for hours over the weekend, or if you write your draft in a notebook with a set of fuzzy feather pins, you know, all of that is great as long as it works for you. Or maybe you just need to let go of that book you think you're supposed to write and write the one that you want to write. Or maybe you just need to let go of the idea that a better book has to be harder to write. Better books do not necessarily take longer to write and they're not necessarily harder to write. Some of my best work has been when I've written it the most easily and quickly. Go figure. The best place to write is whatever is best for you. And I truly believe that the more fun you let yourself have while writing, the more your enthusiasm shines through on the page leading to better work. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm guessing that you are writing a book or you want to write a book. And if so, I would love to hear from you. When I'm not writing, my mission is to help talented writers write their dream books. I love it. I live for it. If you're curious to know more, I have a free video walking you through my exact process for writing a book. And you can get it by just clicking below and answering two questions to apply to my program, The Book Incubator. You can get this video whether you join the program or not. There's no pressure to enroll. Just click below, tell me a little bit about you and your book or your book idea. I'm so excited to hear from you.